Well, this may possibly be not the most exciting video in the world, but I really agonized over the selection and setup and installation of my air system because I don't have a million dollars to spend on this stuff and I need an air system that actually works after spraying some epoxy primer with a little pancake compressor and not to mention trying to run a blast cabinet with a little pancake compressor. I knew I needed something, but uh, air compressors are an item that can get very pricey for the larger units uh, and you know quickly. And I needed something that was affordable, but would also definitely get the job done. I mean, beyond a shadow of a doubt. Um, and painting uh, vehicles is, uh, you know, that's a pretty demanding task for an, an air system. You got to have air. It's got to be clean. It's got to be dry. It's got to have lot. It got to have lots of it. And uh, after all that research and uh, and work. I uh, just can't see it going to waste, so I'll pass it on to you. So if it's not your thing, I'll hopefully see you next video. But uh, stick around. You might find something interesting. It's uh, important. The compressor needs a uh, synthetic lubricant. And if you use a synthetic lubricant, it's rated at 100% duty cycle. So continuous duty cycle. That's very important. Because, uh, if you use conventional oils and the duty cycle goes down and uh, duty cycle is something a lot of people overlook when they compare things like compressors it's extremely important um, since I'll be spraying with my HVLP gun it uses a lot of volume of air and the last thing you want is the, comp the compressor not being able to keep up with the demand for air so you want a big one it's got a you know a large tank of storage and uh, you want it to be able to put out adequate volume and pressure of air continuously, meaning it has to cycle on, it has to cycle on. You know, if you don't want any sputters, you don't want any problems. And that will fit the bill. But to get the continuous rating out of it, you need to use, like I said, the synthetic lubricant that comes with it. The downside is that the synthetic lubricant is incompatible with just about every hose material out there. Um, for connecting the raw air from the compressor, which will be full of oil, directly to the first uh, oil water separator, um, I have this material right here, which is uh, polyurethane. Polyurethane is approved for synthetic oil. So this is actual 100% polyurethane tubing. Um, it has a sufficient burst strength that I will never get to that PSI. This compressor isn't capable of producing enough pressure to burst this hose. So that with some quality fittings and I should be golden for hooking up even with the synthetic oil. Here it is, Ingersoll Rand, five horsepower, 60 gallon air compressor. That's what I'll be installing. This should be enough to run my HVLP spray rigs. It's barely big enough. So the uh, I'll have a separate video where I talk about the guns and the rigs that I chose. I have it a hoist. It's basically just your standard engine hoist. That's not the setup I use for lifting it. What I've got the chain wrapped through the uh, the top assembly here is uh, so it doesn't fall over. These are very top heavy. These models, these vertical compressors like that, extremely top heavy. It only weighs about 310 pounds. But if you get if it gets away from you when you're trying to crab walk it around. Um, it's going to go, and you're not going to be able to stop it. So I've got a the chain on it, left it slack enough that it doesn't really pull anything, and I can maneuver this guy around, you know, by walking it one foot at a time, rocking it back and forth, and it, it rocks pretty easy. Uh, if I get into trouble, eh, I've got a rescue right there. It's not going to let it get away. It's going to go so far, and it's going to be drawn up short. So uh, not the safest arrangement in the world but uh, way better than just trying to do it from muscle alone. Basically you run the wire we've got it into a six foot whip into a junction box and then in conduit to the to the sub panel. Um, it's a 50 foot run and number six is not what it needs. It uh, That's oversized by you can get away with 10. Uh, a lot of people will say you can get away with 10. Uh, I wouldn't feel comfortable doing it with 10, but I would feel comfortable doing 8. 8 is what is in that whip right there. Uh, 
But uh, I put in sixes, and I also put in three conductors. You don't need three conductors. Three conductors plus a ground, I should specify. The neutral, of course, would be used relative to either hot leg to give you uh, 120 volts, right? And this is 240 volts, which is just goes hot leg to hot leg, one phase, 240 volts. Well, the neutral conductor is what gives you like 120. So an example of an appliance that uses both voltages is uh, your kitchen range. If in the future I or someone else wants to add a different kind of device here, um, something that you know needs the neutral leg, well, it's there. Or something that's going to draw an honest higher level of current. Some things in a garage that might uh, that might apply. Um, a welder. Although a lot of people will say you can undersize the wires in a welder as well because it's not a continuous uh, draw. But I'm also not comfortable with that. Um, uh, but a resistive heater of some kind, uh, a kiln, uh, a heat treatment oven, right? All of these devices would draw um, a, a very high level of uh, current and... Um, you know, number 10 wire isn't good enough for that. Uh, the number six is in there. Um, uh, will be good to around 50 amps or so. So that's uh, one major reason is that if you want to add a heat treatment oven or a kiln or anything like that, or a heater, shop heater, whatever, it's going to need honest amps just because the breaker is... It says 40 amps doesn't mean that you can actually carry 40 amps if you've downsized the wires. In short, the increased cost of using a heavier gauge wire is uh, a small price to pay for just peace of mind and uh, flexibility going down the road in the future, you know, to avoid uh, someone else making a mistake. The outlet isn't a dedicated, you know, wire to a uh, air conditioner or something else that's unlikely to be repurposed. It's just in a garage, so it could very easily be repurposed for something else in the future. And if you wire it this way, um, uh, you have that flexibility. My air conditioning setup. Air come in, comes in to the left, into your standard filter with air water separator. This is a 90 CFM unit, and I put all the air through this unit. I take my blasting cabinet air off of there and a general purpose shop air as well. Next unit, this is a finer filter, a 10 micron filter and a regulator. This is a 72 CFM unit up to 150 PSI working pressure. This is, comes down to a leg I use for uh, uh, my air tools. Stuff like that in the shop. So that's general purpose air for air tools. The last stage of my little setup is another filter and oil mist separator. This is a 10 micron filter again. This is a 0.1 micron filter and oil mist separator. That's supposed to take out 99.9% .9 of oil aerosols, microscopic droplets another regulator so the air coming into this unit is usually 90 psi or so that's what i have the other regulator set to they, they cascade together and uh, then i can adjust it down for whatever i'm using this is generally for my hvlp spraying and it's worked out really well for that so far I also have a stub out that I've left, and this is in case I need to add a little loop for uh, a desiccant dryer. Uh, it is humid here, and uh, it's possible that um, I will need to put a desiccant loop in there. So I've made provisions for that already. I've, I've just priced it and don't want to pay, <laughs> but we'll see. It's not like I paint all the time, you know, so uh, we'll see how that works out.